think the um, why is very simple. If you look at what has happened in the past two years, particularly in 2019, where we have all sorts of violence in the streets and uh, the um, rioters are actually, were actually uh, even um, rushed and then um, they attacked our legislative council building and then they occupied um, the whole building for quite a while before the police moved in. And that's one thing triggered by the so-called uh, mutual destruction uh, theory put forward by Professor Dayo Ting. And what they were trying to do was to seize power from uh, Hong Kong SAR. They have actually colluded with outside forces like the United States in order to overturn the administration in Hong Kong. And they were saying publicly that they were actually fighting in Hong Kong for the U United States. And that was advocated by um, Apple Daily publisher Lai Chi Ying. That is totally unacceptable in any other countries in the world. Yeah. If you look at all these uh, events that uh, actually took place in Hong Kong, including um, the um, 203, uh, when Mr. Tong was chief executive, he was trying to legislate Article 23 under the Protect Law, the National Security for Hong Kong. But that was uh, overturned by the opposition with a mass, mass demonstration on the street. And came 2012, we were trying to introduce national education to Hong Kong, and the opposition parties campaigned against it. And they have uh, organized all sorts of protections and assist the Legislative Council building. In 2014, they had the so-called occupied central movement. And then in early 2016, they had these riots in Mong Kok, a district in Hong Kong, where they had mobilized all sorts of rioters and uh, people smash windows and uh, uh, attacking police, etc. And then in 2019, we had these uh, riots, which was so rampant across the whole city in, China, in, in, in Hong Kong, that uh, we were uh, suffering a lot, both in terms of economic activities, in terms of uh, normal livelihood. So the Chinese government made up its mind and introduced the National Security Law for Hong Kong. It was actually established and uh, legislated by the National People's Congress um, Standing Committee on the 30th of June. And that, as you can see, put Hong Kong back to the right track right away. And most of the violent and riot activities in Hong Kong, which took place in 2019, disappeared almost overnight. And also, I think if you look at the National Security Law for Hong Kong, it stipulates that Hong Kong should, and the Hong Kong government should as well, carry out education for uh, students. Uh, they should also carry out education for public officers, particular people in key governing positions in Hong Kong. We should also ramp up our improvement on the media in Hong Kong, the social workers in Hong Kong, teachers in Hong Kong, and all the institutions that have major political, economic, and social impacts on Hong Kong. It's very good that the uh, central government takes the initiative to establish framework at the national level. Um, so Hong Kong um, will have to recognize that this is the authority of the central government. And the central government has also the duty to ensure that the Hong Kong SAR region is one that is governed or and administered by patriots. Patriots meaning that you have to respect and love your country. You have to respect and love the constitution, the basic law, and the tradition, uh, the uh, political system uh, in China and in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So I think 
that is why we have to legislate. We have to make amendments to improve and and overhaul the current efficient electoral system in Hong Kong. Well, I think, as I said uh, just a while ago, that um, it is um, a must that you uh, ensure that the governing organs are occupied by uh, people with a patriotic heart towards their own country. If you have people not patriots, and yet they were given the authority, how can you ensure that they will not um, collude with outsiders and collaborate with outsiders so I think it's a very natural and very logical um, thing to, to, do, to do. So I think the legitimacy is that um, this is a very logical thing, a very basic thing, and it is a fundamental requirement of anyone who wants to be in the governing position. You have to accept the political fact that China is governed by the Chinese Communist Party. You have to accept that China is... Uh, exercising socialism with the Chinese characteristics. Uh, you have to accept the fact that Hong Kong is part of China. I think we Hong Kong has to be uh, part of this uh, uh, whole framework. So I think the overall jurisdiction of the Chinese government of Hong Kong is undebatable. It is undisputable. It is a fact you have to accept. So I think the legitimacy of doing this is actually quite natural. In my own view, I think there are a few areas that we can improve. One, I think regarding the election of the uh, chief executive, the number of election committee members may well be uh, revealed. Uh, Whether 12,000 can be increased to embrace and include uh, people like the uh, more members of the uh, CPP, national CPPCC members of the National Committee, uh, some of the uh, Hong, Hong, uh, Chinese enterprises in Hong Kong, uh, they could be given more places uh, in the election committee, all right? And also, I think there has been talks in the past few weeks, um, including that by the um, director of Hong Kong Macau Affairs Office, Xia Maolong. And I think a lot of proposals given to him was to place the 117 seats in election committee uh, of the district councillors by the um, CPPCC members of the national committee. Because I think the CPPCC uh, member of the national committees, they are at national level. And the chief executive is actually um, accountable, not only just to Hong Kong, but he's also accountable to the central government, central people's government. So that's one area. The second area, that I think it's, it's just the um, who are qualified um, to stand for election as chief executive. And I think in the past, the chief executive would have to obtain 150 uh, nominations from the 1,200 uh, election committee members. Currently, we have four sectors within the election committee. Um, I think the sectors could also be increased, as I, as I said earlier on, to include people like uh, uh, CPPCC members of the national committee and uh, members of the uh, Chinese enterprises in Hong Kong. Remember, the Chinese enterprises in Hong Kong now um, has a very high percentage of Hong Kong market share in terms of Hong Kong's economy. If you look at uh, Hong Kong Stock Exchange portfolio, uh, more than 50%, close to 60% of the companies listed on Hong Kong Stock Exchange are mainland or mainland related enterprises and companies. And the market capitalization is more than 70%. So how come? How come that Chinese enterprises and Chinese companies could not be given more seats in the election committee? 
in the election of the chief executive. All right? So that is another area. I think also another area is the functional constituency. Currently, if you look at the makeup of the functional constituency, um, for example, the professional sector, you have the engineers, you have the doctors, you have the surveyors and the architects, and you have the IT uh, people, you have the um, uh, lawyers, etc. These are returned, these seats are returned by individual votes. And it is no secret that um, most of these are actually dominated by the opposition parties. So as to ensure that, that these seats are occupied by uh, patriots, we may have to change the composition of the voters, meaning that uh, it would be better if we could change the individual votes into corporate votes. So uh, why not we change that into um, legal firms, uh, accounting firms, surveyor firms, you know, so that the corporate votes will be more rational. And I think that will give a much better balance to the current uh, made up of the uh, functional constituency in the legislature. I mean, I mean, there are, of course, the, 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 the nomination um, uh, process is also very important. Uh, how could you ensure that the nominees are patriots? Then this is the first hurdle or the first gatekeeping that you have to do uh, by ensuring that whoever enters the race or chief executive or, or legislation uh, sit, uh, legislature sits are uh, patriots or mostly patriots. So I think there must be a certain criteria that will have to be set up and also maybe we'll have to have something like uh, a selection committee, uh, nomination committee uh, to ensure that the people who are entering the race, who are qualified to enter the race, are actually uh, really patriots, are genuinely patriots and respect our white country to, to systems.